Hi, I'm Pastor Steve Green, and with me is my wife, Dee. As we continue to work our way back, we believe the first thing to get back to is prayer. After 40 years of ministry, we know that prayer changes things. You're not alone. If you need prayer, call the MTC Christ is Center prayer line. Or submit your prayer request online, mtcfc.org. Remember, Remember we're, we're here, here for, for you, you, and, and we've, we've got, got your back. back. to help me sing this song.
Lift, lift your Bible, lift your iPhone. Reverence the Word of God. Lift it, lift it, lift it. The Holy Writ of God. Let it breathe on us today. Hey God, all scripture, all scripture, all scripture, all scripture. Breathe on us, God. Breathe through the Holy Writ. Breathe. Ministers in training, open down my eyes that I may behold wonderful things out of the Lord. Open down our eyes, oh God, oh God, that we may behold wonderful things out of the Lord. Oh, bread of life, thy word, thy word. Your word of God. Mighty 
the Lord and mighty in battle. Jesus Christ. He is the Lord of glory. Jesus Christ. He is the healer. Jesus Christ. Waymaker. Miracle worker. Light in the darkness. My God. That is who you are. Just to help out a couple of other singers. Waymaker. Waymaker. Miracle worker. Promise keeper, light in the darkness, my God, that is who you are. Come on, Daniel. My God. You do that again. Somebody need him to make a
Sweetly, sweetly. Sing it.
Hallelujah. We will uh, transition into, I mean, you know, that prayer. Uh, pray for us that the word of the Lord may have three courses, part of your prayer. Pray for us, we taught in boot camp, that the word of the Lord would have three courses. And it just took all kind of courses there. Since there's a new river flowing, I'm telling you what I know. I'm telling you what I know. It's a new freedom. I found freedom is going to be in the house. I cannot explain it, but I know it. I'll be talking in a moment. We've gone much longer in this singing, but double portion, Cadelia and Alea and Jonathan, you just got too comfortable in the Word of God. My Lord. You ain't been in snap like that and I don't snap behind you. <laughs> They're growing up, aren't they? Amen. Amen. I'll be... talking about the season of command. That's not the topic. You says to everything there is a season. Tied that in the Rosh Hashanah. But this is not the season to be begging for anything. This is a season of command. You're going to command some stuff. Thank you, Lord. Yes. Thank you, Lord. I promise you that. You're going to command some stuff. We'll see it in Second Thessalonians uh, three times. The Apostle Paul talks about the authority that you have, the ability to just command it. I don't want to get ahead of myself three months ahead of time on prayer. I'll be calling our prayer conference 2024. 20, the theme will be just ask. My God. Just ask. Nothing else needs to be said. Just ask. Because there are levels of prayer. There are some times where you just ask, and it shall be given. Seek, and it shall be found. Knock, and it will be open. But just ask. In that, we'll get into a place. There are certain things where you don't just ask. You just command and demand. And you say, I command you, Satan, in the name of the Lord. To take up your weapons and flee. For the Lord has given me authority to walk all over the military camp. I
Give the Lord a hand of praise. Amen. Amen. Wow, what a presence. What a presence. Boy, we flow somewhere there. Getting the Lord a hand. That's yeah, we going, we going Waymaker. We going Army of the Lord. We going was, is, and is to come. Don't you ever get it twisted. We are an army. And it's not just those that's been in the army about ready to retire. We're drafting some Jonavas and some Aleas and some. Come on, y'all. If we ain't got somebody else coming behind us, we are in trouble. So don't tell me that about what you did and how you did it years ago. I think the whole concept of Rosh Hashanah is to make sure that the next generation never forgot what God did. If you're talking about, well, I love the feast season, and I love the Hebrews, and I'm a Yom Kippur kind of guy and feast of ingathering, and you're not sitting down telling them the way it used to be, you're missing something. If God's going to replace the years, Joel said, if I read it right, let's just start there before I get my topic. Let's just bring a scripture up and just start there since that's where we are. Let's start with Joel, and we'll go into the pre script in a moment. Thou art beautiful, O my love, as an army, terrible with banners, as an army. Everybody say, we are an army. If you're at boot camp, you know I like to make up my own words and put hyphens in my own word. <laughs> army. A-R hyphen. My. R. Mine. You are mine, said the Lord. You are mine. You don't blow to yourself. You are mine. Amen. But watch what Joel said, and we'll go into for those that got to have a topic. 
we so far out there, I can just start talking about what John was saying about writing the tablets in my heart. He just snapped, man. He got the swag. I told Kara, I said, he better go somewhere. He, he better lose it. Uh, um, Fernandez already just snapped. And Kadir, just give the Lord a hand. I just, come on. So remind me of, I've seen this kind of energy before when we've, I've seen this before, and I'm excited about it. But Joel, just to kind of extrapolate the truths uh, from it, I don't uh, want to overkill. I don't want to cause uh, a, a cognitive uh, overload here, uh, overfeed uh, by you thinking too much. I just want to just hit that point again. And Joel chapter 1 says that now God's getting ready to replace years that you have lost. That's what Joel said. That ain't even a promise of prophecy. God, if we're talking about happy new year, you would think he's only going to be working on this year. But I hear the Lord saying in Joel 2.25, I am going to replace years that you have lost. That's what he said. And then I'll go into the, the commands of God here for those that need a topic. Go ahead and bring that topic up so they'll know at least I'm headed somewhere, but I'm going to stay in this long, uh, in this vein here. Uh, uh, Lord willing, Lord willing, I'm going to be talking about the commands to the body of Christ. Commands to the body of Christ. I was uh, going to call that first line uh, uh, giving Satan's orders. Uh, commanding Satan around, something like that. Commanding Satan around, and telling him. I mean, we just uh, uh, telling him. We don't know which way he's going. Or we are going to be talking about commands to the body of Christ. Everybody say commands to the body of Christ. Now we can man you Satan all we want to, but we got to have some commands too, don't we? He ain't in the army. We are commands to the body of Christ and company commanders. Company commanders. I had a little time that the Lord allowed me to be in ROTC. I think um, Keith Poole, uh, he may be running a camera. He was in, in ROTC, and they had at the head of it was called Battalion Commander, and they had a Company A and a Company B. And uh, if you were over those companies that had uh, squads, so forth, you were called a Company Commander. Now, you got to listen real good because you think I'm just talking about a military thing, but I ain't talking about a military when I say company commander. I'm at least talking about two other things when I say company commander. I'm talking about your company that you work for and your business. He's going to command some things in your company. He's a company commander. He's out in front. A company commander was out here, and they might have had two uh, groups behind him, and he stood out front, and the battalion commander was way out front. But Jesus is at least a company commander. Whatever company you work for right now, he's going to command it not to shut down until you got what you need. I work for a company myself called MTC. Board of Trustees, it ain't about to shut down because he's commanding it not to be. And the second dimension of this, as I heard to Joel, is he's a company commander. While he's taking care of your business or your company, he's also going to start commanding who you keep company with. Who we? I say some folk been walking with you ain't going to be able to walk with you in the days to come because he's a company commander. Oh, come on, come on, come on. He's, I'm just talking. Some of this is the overflow from boot camp. That's all it is. You're going to see Paul talks about commands. Three, that's just overflow from boot camp. That he has the right to determine that you will no longer be hanging out with people just because they got wings. There are three sets of dimensions of creatures that got wings. They're the chicken that's all he's doing is flapping, but he ain't going no higher than the backyard. Tell somebody you are not a chicken. So you can't keep company with chickens anymore. There's a sparrow that's got wings and he flies a little bit higher in the immediate. He just want to go to the treetop. But he don't want to go to the mountaintop. Right? Can you see that? The sparrow just, you know, he just go to, he don't really, really soar. He flies. So there's a flapping and then there is a flying sparrow. And then here's what you are. You in that third dimension. You an eagle. He's got wing. 
But eagles don't flap. They don't fly. They soar. And they go up into the highest atmosphere. I dare you look at somebody and say, you about, to, you about to soar into your highest. But if you're going to be an eagle and not a chicken and not a sparrow, neither f- flapping or flying, but soaring and gliding, you must learn how to wait on the Lord. Isaiah says it best. You can bring it on and track me. Uh, it asks and poses a question to you, Mr. and Mrs. Eagle. Have you not known? Have you not heard that the everlasting God, the creator of all the ends of the earth, Fainteth not and neither is he weary. You may be sick and tired of being sick and tired and neither is he weary. As a matter of fact, to prove that he's not weary, he gives power to the faint. And to those that have not a little strength, Isaiah says, but to those that have no strength at all. He increases strength. You only get an increase in strength when you have been exasperated of all strength. You don't have any energy at all. He increases their strength. Who's he talking about? Everybody. Even the youth shall faint and grow weary. And another level. And young men shall utterly fall. So the fainting is one category and grow weary, youth. Young men, second category, second category, utterly fall. But the third category, it does not mention falling at all. But they that wait on the Lord shall renew their strength. When you wait on God, your strength is being renewed. I don't know what time uh, we're going to be in here. Maybe as long as those that's on dialysis is hooked up to a machine that they cannot get up till the blood get through pumping new blood in them. And they will not in any moment pull away from that machine. And they do it three times a week. If you only knew how anemic you really were. That this machine called the anointing is giving you an, a dialysis. But I really called it an analysis. He's analyzing your fears and things that will not flush out on his own. For the purpose of the kidney is to flush your bowel system. But when it does not do so, uh, you have to get hooked up. So there are some things in your life that you cannot flesh out. Your headaches, your pains, your peers. But the blood of Jesus is circulating. I don't want to go down too many tracks, or as we call it in staff, we don't want to go chasing too many rabbits. Because there's an old adage say, if you chase two rabbits, it is certainly you'll not catch one. They're too fast. But there is the dimension of the blood because I feel the application is of the discerning of spirits in this room of the blood working like dialysis. Flushing your inside out of all toxic material and waste. Right? It's not enough to digest the word. The whole digestive tract, GI, gastrointestinal tract, right, works by flushing, digesting, breaking it down, by masticating and breaking it down into nutrient, into oxygen that carries blood to the cells. So today, as you're not chewing this word, something's got to break it down. So it can get in every part of your body from the top of your head to it reaches your pocketbook. I plead the blood of Jesus on your entire body. Oh my God. That it can flash out everything you could not use. So we will not be constipated believers. Hearing it but doing nothing with it. Now uh, let me flow here for a moment before I go to God restoring everything. 
that they wait upon the Lord, they shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings as eagles. They shall run and not be weary. And they shall walk and not faint. Now, I'm going to go out here, uh, readers. In Ecclesiastes, chapter number 12, it talks about youth. This is kind of like Youth Sunday, right? And um, I'm going to say it's chapter 11, not 12, because I think 11 says, Catch your bread up on the waters. You'll find it after many days. Chapter 12 should say in verse 1, in around verse 6, it would talk about in the Amplified Bible, one of the reasons people are not healed because the, the circulatory system of the blood has failed. I know it's there. I'm just, he's just bringing it up to my, whole, to my holy mind right now. I renewed my mind. I know it's down there. It's, uh, it talks about when the whole circulatory, got to look good, it's around verse 6 or 7 in there, in uh, Revelation, I mean, in, um, in um, Ecclesiastes, Ecclesiastes 12. 12 and 6, it should be right. Yes. Okay, but watch this. But verse number 1, let me just stop by verse 1 long enough to j- kind of jolt your mind and your remembrance. It should start with verse 1 by saying, remember. This is a good time to you to remember. Not just to, you know, you have to watch those words, remember and remind. Remind can mean like a, a notification, not to forget, but remind also means for God to take your mind out the picture and give you a whole nother mind so you have the mind of Christ. I want to tell you that God is reminding you. Boy, you missed a good place. This is good preaching. 1 Corinthians 2.16, don't go there, but make a note of it. It says, we have the mind of Christ. You didn't have the mind of Christ when you got saved. You had the mind of the world. We are the world. You didn't have the mind of Christ. No, you didn't. This is what uh, uh, Brother Terrence wrote so, read so eloquently today. My thoughts are not your thoughts. You, your word was sharp. You look sharp. Your glasses look sharp. Your jacket looks sharp. You just sharp. Thank you, sir. And it says, I beseech you, therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you present your body as a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable, rational, intelligent, devotional, consecrated service, that you not be conformed to this world, neither adopting amplified, nor adapting its external supercultural of, of, uh, uh, ideas, nor its ideas or its ideas. Don't adopt, nor adapt. It's superficial because it's, it's not real. It's costume thinking. But be transformed by the renewing of your mind. So he has to remind you. Those words like remind you. He has to renew you. He's reminding us right now of some things. He's literally putting a whole nother mindset. For my thoughts are not your thoughts. My ways are not your ways. For as the rain cometh down from the heavens. And watereth the earth, and the snow cometh down. Two elements. So God was basically saying, it really doesn't matter whether it's rainy season, which is harvest season, or snow season, where you're slipping and sliding, you'll know where you're going. Either one of them is going to cause your harvest to grow. It's your rain and your snow that makes your harvest grow. Man, I'm teaching you what he said. That was Isaiah 55. As the rain comes down, ask a farmer that watches the almanac, and he thinks he knows when it's going to rain, when he's going to plant. And the rain has to come down. Water where he's planted. And it makes the earth to bring forth and bud. He says, so shall my word be. My word will do the same thing for you that rain and snow does to a seed. Once it goes out of my mouth, it will not return unto me void. Boy, you ought to shout right there. Once God says something, it will not return it will re-evaporate. It will be a vapor. It will condescend. It will move back into another realm. And the clouds will dump the rain again. But no word of God will ever return from to God. Boy, if God said anything to you, it is he did not void that out. It's not like your money that you wrote a check and you had money before you wrote it. But a few obstacles got in your way after you wrote it. God never voids anything. He doesn't avoid anybody. He's not intimidated by your bad credit. He doesn't avoid no wonder Psalm 10 he said why avoidest me oh God God is not avoiding you like you avoid that bill collectors say tell him I ain't here God is not avoiding your critics he deals with them stand straight up and he makes command it will not return 
So he's renewing. He's reprogramming. He's updating. He's upgrading our minds. Why is he doing that, Romans 12 says? That you may prove what is that good, acceptable, and perfect will of God. The best you could ever do from this day forward is good. God never created a, uh, any other day called good. There was no bad days in Genesis. Every one of the days started at the lowest was good. And he saw on the first day it was good. Well, somebody say, well, what do you say about all these bad days I've had? I thought you say you don't create bad days. No, even your bad day is a good day. Because all things work together for the good. He's just working something that you cannot see. But you are not in a bad day at all. This is the day that the Lord hath made. And you will rejoice and be glad in it. Whether it's raining or whether it's snowing. God's word will not return void. That's why we must learn how to preach the word in season and out of season. Even if it wasn't Rosh Hashanah. God is still good all the time. So it says remember now. Now he's reminding us and he's. Telling us to remember. He reminds, but you remember. Now remember got as many connotations as the word company keepers. Right? Yeah, it's got the many word. Keeping company. That second topic. What is that remember? Now listen to this. God is remembering, not just causing you to not forget. But every member of your body is being impacted by the word of God. From your head to your eyes. Now, 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 please hear me. This thing, when God talks about the body of Christ, he says, we are the body of Christ. First Corinthians, in my mind, serve me, right? Chapter 12, around verse 25. First Corinthians 12, 25, someone there. Maybe off of GPS. But it says, we are the body of Christ and members in particular, first, we are the body of Christ. So when we, before we dare try to peek and see what's happening with the membership of More Than Conquerors, can I start with you? Because we can be no greater than you are. We are the body of Christ. Am I close? First Corinthians 12, 25, someone there? Yes. What, what verse is it? 25. What, first Corinthians 12, what? 12, 25. What verse did I say? 25. That's what I thought. I'm just kidding because I'm off. Just as sure as I said that, I'll be off of the GPS. I'm just saying I've studied. So that whole metaphor there is talking about the body of Christ. Why don't you scan your body and talk to your body right now with all of his promises? that you are the body of Christ. You are not your own. And tell your body you belong to you. He said, you belong to me. He said, Every, tell your ear, you're mine. You're not somebody else's ear. You're not somebody else's heart. And you will be with me all the days of your life. So for those of you that think that you can just up and just go to another member of another body, then you, the Lord told me to tell your ear is about to join somebody else's body right now. <laughs> your eye want to know, can it have membership all your life? The only time you give that body up is when you die. And it's called a transplant. They got to rush in and take it. And some of your members in your body is so bad, the kidney said we can't even put that in nobody else's body. I've seen people try to transplant and go fit in somebody else's body, and the body reject them because you didn't realize that you can't fit but in one, uh, one body. No, every kid, some kidneys reject. That's why some of you went to companies and worked for folk, and you couldn't stay there five minutes because you were better off where you were. Because they rejected you. Oh, I'm teaching this place. We are the body of Christ and members what? So he's remembering you. Now, a real assembling us, what we call the army God. The real symbol. I got a beautiful picture of how important assembly is. I've forgotten about it, but whenever I teach, it's going to come on the news. The UAW, the United Auto Workers of America, went on strike. I don't know if they ended or not, but I know they struck. <laughs> you know, you do the same thing. You done struck on God, too, and you came back in 24 hours. So the one that was on the assembly line, all they did all day long was just made, majored on one part. Because they knew from forward and everything else that if they did not keep their part in that assembly line with no cars going out. Aren't you glad that your body is an assembly line. Your ears, 
is where it always been. Your nose has always been nosy and it always will be. <laughs> Your mouth. But God is reassembling the assembly line. If you don't strike. And church workers do the same thing that Lucifer did. He struck against God. Do the same thing that church members do. They'll strike and go out and start picketing. Picking, and I got a little hum here if you can hear this in the drummy sound. And start picketing. It's not so much the mic, it's the drummy sound. I mean, we could try it. All right. So the reassembling, the reassembly of the body of Christ. Let's look at your name and say, God's putting you back together again. Everything in your body that's out of place, that's not working. He's putting it back together again. Will you please give God for the real assembling of the body of Christ? Come on, y'all. You're trying to act like you ain't got parts of your body that is not working. You got a lot of parts that's not functioning and the doctor don't know what to do with it. You better give God a praise that he's doing more than remembering the body of MTC. He's bringing back people that used to be members and not. Larry, thank you for being back. Andrea, thank you for being back. Some people he's remembering. And there are some things that you've forgotten about that's getting ready to come back to you that ain't been to you in years. For Joel said, I will replace the years that you have lost. Boy, that's crazy. That's crazy. That's crazy. You better give God a praise. Some of you used to drive some crazy cars. You used to shop and drop, and, but you ain't been able to do that. But the Lord told me to tell you, he's about to remember what you forgot that you used to have. Because you have acclimated yourself and adjusted yourself to poverty and not having enough. But that day is over. This is a new year. Yeah. Isn't that crazy? You remember how it used to be in the good old days when you could walk anywhere, eat anywhere, drive anywhere, but COVID made you change. I remember how it used to be when I first started pastoring 38 years ago. I'd break out and sing anywhere. But religious folk pull you down, man, and say, we're looking at the clock. Boom, gone. Love you. But I remember why he called me. Not to be what you saw around the corner. But what you prayed today, what eyes have not seen. I am not here to bring you what you saw. If I ever start just doing what you saw, I miss my call. So don't let me try to fit into somebody else's box. Do not try to put a round ball and circle in a square hole. <laughs> I'm at the tip of the spear. And all the leaders that's with me, you must live like you at the tip of the spear. I heard Nick Saban, even in the midst of his adjustment, Alabama's storied, glory church. They would ask him about, you know, he had looked like a down season. He making all kind of adjustments. And he'd say, well, what's your biggest challenge? It was a loaded question. This man won six, seven, eight championships. It's amazing how you could be done, done all kind of things in eight, ten years. And folks still question where you got it anymore. <laughs> I'm going Nick Saban won 18 years and people look at me 38 years and are we going to be alright we're alright for you got him we'll be alright when you leave Amen. and he said the, the, the biggest challenge is to get people to keep the same standard that I got without backing down I said man I feel you without saying that you got uh, what's that condition? OBC obsessive. Oh, y'all know what it is, don't you? <laughs> oh, yeah, they said, but say, say it loud, Pastor. It's obsessive. It's OB what? Ob obsessive compulsive disorder. Which means you, you just got, you can't stand to see a piece of paper because you're obsessed and it'll drive you crazy until you change it. Well, there's some of us are successful because we don't want a light bulb. I may have that. I could walk in a lamp on the table, and I'm going to see if it's on. And if the bulb is not there, it's got to be changed. 
because I need God operating with me like that. If he see that I just have barely enough, I need him to notice right down to the detail that not a hair falls off my head without his notice. Uh, it's called the knowledge of God. Uh, even not a sparrow drops to the ground for the whole earth without God knowing it. Not a snowflake is made that's not the same. He's that detail. Uh, I've come to tell you that the master is concerned about every detail of your life. He's got a bad uh, case of oh what now? Obsessive compulsive disorder. He can't stand to see things uh, not working. He looked at the universe that he had created in Genesis 1. In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth, and it was in order. But then the earth got out of order, and it vexed the heck out of God. And God said, can't stay that way, and the Spirit of God move. Uh, and then God said, turn the lights back on. Let there be light. Uh, I want to let you know that God is obsessed uh, with your light coming back. We make a light in the darkness. Huh? He's about to turn your joy back on. Your faith. He can't stand disorder. He can't stand your body hurting. Your legs not moving. Your mind going crazy. Your critics getting the best. He hates this obsessive compulsive disorder. And only the spirit of God can move that. The earth was without form and void. Darkness was upon the face of the deep. Waymaker, miracle worker, light in the dark. And the spirit of God, Genesis 1 on the screen, moved. Ooh. I don't know what I would do on Sunday mornings if you came in here and the spirit of God did not move. That's the time to quit. That's the time to hang up. You don't move because your friends move. You don't get out of the body because your friends. You move when the spirit is not moving. Right, Genesis 1? Right, and the spirit of God. Earth was out form and void. You read it on the screen. And darkness was upon what? The face of the deep. It was a flood there. And, and Dr. Donna taught the ministers training yesterday to the ministers we we have it quickly the 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 concept of cause and effect that some scriptures you read the effect has to do with the cause the effect on the earth that it was dark the cause was the spirit of god the effect was that was like the the effect the cause was darkness was upon the face just because it was dark the spirit of god moved the only reason the Spirit of God just moved in this room is because you've got some darkness you brought up in here today. It wasn't we couldn't stop singing. It wasn't that we were showcasing Cam. It wasn't that Jonathan lost it. The Spirit of God moved because of what? Because something is on your face that don't look like joy. And the Spirit of God moved. And the word move is to hover, standing still. He would not move. Come on, until the earth began to drop down water greater than the flood. And then God said something. That's the only reason God, the Spirit of God moves. Somebody said, I had a, a great time in my house because there was darkness in your house, boo. There was something he was trying to move or remove. And then he starts saying, let there be light. And the Bible said, and it was so. And it was so. And the evening and the morning was the first day. Then he finally got to creating man. Somebody thank God that the Spirit of God moves every time. The Spirit of God moves so high sometimes that you can't even move. Have you ever got in an airplane and you were sending and you could just feel the gravity pushing you back to your seat? You can feel that a little bit for those of you that drive in strife, that drive 70 miles an hour, 80, 90. Once you hit the accelerator, it starts pushing you back to your seat. And the higher you go, the more the pushback. Because what's happening is in the spirit realm, the law of gravity is pushing back against where you're trying to go. 
You're trying to pierce through that next rim, but the force that you're flying through is pinning you to your seat. So you won't get much victory in the camp if there's no pushback. Look at your name and say, you got to push back against the forces of darkness. You got to clap. You got to run. You got to push back. You can't let the enemy just push you back as you're gliding and sliding through the next atmosphere. You must pay for it. You must lean for it. You must incline like you're going to another. Push back against the enemy. In other words, submit yourself unto God and resist the devil. And he will flee. We got it wrong. Some resist God and submit to the devil. Push back. Don't sit back and let him just run all over you and people say whatever. Or oh, this ain't going to work. Or oh, you feel. No, I'm going to push back with the word. I'm going to write his tablets on my heart. I'm pushing back. I'm going to push back with the word of God. I shall not die, but I shall live and declare the works of the Lord. The joy of the Lord is my strength. My God shall supply. I'm pushing back. I'm not going to just look at an empty checkbook. I'm pushing back. I'm the head and not the tail. I'm pushing back. No, everybody's not rejecting me. I'm accepted in the below. I'm pushing back. You better learn how to push back. People come against you all kind of way, conspiracy. Have you ever felt conspiracy? Hey, I mean, like a pocket of people. Sometimes like in the business world, maybe the good old boys, you come there with your portfolio, you can feel like it's already rigged for you getting there. They're just going through the motions. What are you going to do? You got to push back. It's called collusion, conspiracy, bureaucracy, red tape. So I've been feeling that uh, in the spirit realm. As Second Chronicles 20 things says, there was a war going against Pastor Jehoshaphat, you know, and it says Ammon and some of the others, beside them others, came against Jehoshaphat, and somebody came and told him. See, you won't know how great your enemy is unless you got somebody connected to Facebook that can come tell you what they're saying. You won't realize what you're up against until somebody tell you in that upper room that your, that your package is not half as sharp as you thought it was. We need somebody. Even with, with, uh, with Job, when all that attack came, he didn't know all oh, him. Somebody to come and tell him, man, your children's house just got towed up like this. Somebody, thank God for nosy people. They will give you a litmus test of what you're up against. And somebody came and told Jehoshaphat what he was against. He said, oh, my God, Second Chronicles 20. And you know what he did? He pushed back. He called the fast. He pushed the table back. That's the first thing you got to push back. <laughs> the first thing you need to push back is your, your diet. You got to push that back. You got to push your belly back from that table. That's the first thing you got to push back. Because this kind you're wrestling with will not be worn other than fasting and prayer. You will not be able to push the enemy back with a full plate. Job 23, verse number 12 says, I esteem thy word, the tablets, more than my necessary food. I'm here to declare that these 12 and talking about the commands. I esteem. We go into verse 6, chapter 12, Ecclesiastes. Remembering thy creator in the days of you, that you are God's property now is what verse 1 says. Remember but some of you got the win. You up against some stuff that you are not going to be able to win by your mind. And you're not going to be able to win it by your body and the body of work that you got. You're going to have to win this one by your spirit. You're going to have to win this one by the spirit. I'm telling you what you're up against because you're up against some of them by your spirit. Jehoshaphat set a fast, called the whole church. He got on his face, worshiped God. And somebody like uh, Marquette got a song and just started singing out his spirit. Oh, he just started singing. Right? And then the Lord, out of that song, brought a word and said, you don't even need to fight in this battle. Because this battle that you're now in is not even yours. It's the Lord. And he said, and better back, we are not going to take three months to win it. You are going to win it tomorrow. Tomorrow, go down by the cliff called Ziz 
And you are going to go and do the same thing on tomorrow that you did today. See, the problem with a lot of you is you shout on Sunday, but you like a church mouse on Mondays. Don't nobody even know that you even know Jehovah. But I dare you to go outside and act like you deranged. Do like the man did on the corner. The best preacher in West End is the man on that corner with that truck that gets there at 7 o'clock. He's an usher. He's a preacher. He ain't taking up no offering. He got his own sound. You never, ain't nobody ever, when the Lord sent me, ain't nobody ever going to be sent to the corner. He gets there at 7 o'clock right there by McDonald's. Great cloud of witnesses, right? He take that first shift from about 6 to about noon, and the Muslim take the second shift from about noon to 6, and the church folk take the third shift to J. Alexander and Perry's. I'm just saying, I'm just saying, your, your religion only seemed to work inside the confines of the poor walls for some reason. I don't know why. So they went down tomorrow, and, and, and the Bible said, tell them, just say, the Lord is good, and his mercy is everlasting, and his truth. And the, the whole choir went out there. Not to get the war before the board of case, the whole choir. Don't tell me about all these uh, places you're going and all that. I get that. That's wonderful. When will you take a choir and just sing in Gate City? In North Birmingham, just go right out there where bullets are going over your head in a war zone. Now, you want to be in a demilitarized zone where the only bullets we're getting is what you're saying in the house of God. Now, everybody ain't got to go there. So if you know you ain't going there, at least finance the war. At least make sure we got enough materials to go. If you ain't going, put enough in your budget to send us. One of the biggest uh, item, uh, budget items in the president's is they spend billions of dollars for war equipment. So if you know you ain't going, don't talk about us when we go. Thank you, Don. But it's done, isn't it? Okay. I know them by that, not by their faces, but by their voices. My sheep know my voice and I know my sheep. I know everybody that say hallelujah. And I know everybody that go to sleep at what time you go to sleep. <laughs> I know some of you don't you don't leave about ten more minutes. I got about ten more minutes on you. I got you. That's all right. We all right. But I, I, I'm so in love with you. Just stay right there. Just, just drop your check before you go. So he, he won the battle. If you got spirit ears, he won the battle in 24 hours. Oh, God. He won the battle the next day. I'm just hoping somebody hearing what I'm saying. But it took three days to pick up what he won. It's going to take three times as long for you to pick up what you've been fighting against. Did you hear what he just said? It took them more days together in gathering, and it only took them one day to fight. So for every day that you fight, you get three times the harvest. So if you'll fight on Sunday... Your salary of what God pays you on Sunday is worth three days of what you're doing on Monday and Tuesday and Wednesday. In three days, the Bible said on the fourth day, uh, they went to the Valley of Baraka and they called it the Valley of Blessing. Uh, and they found nothing but dead bodies. God will kill your enemies uh, if they mess over you. God will wipe your enemies out. Uh, they will fall to the ground, fall out of the bidding process. They will, come on, uh, cancer will fall out of your body. Things that just start, interest rates will fall. You're not hearing what I'm saying. Your praise is lethal. It will kill something in 24 hours. And it'll take you three days. And the Bible said uh, it took them three to four days to gather up the things that had come off, fallen from dead bodies. Am I going to even make it to this watch thing? I'm somewhere in the betwixt between Ecclesiastes chapter 12 that talks about the circulation of the blood that eliminates all ways by way of Joel that says, have you seen anything like this in your days? Joel chapter 1. Tell this to your children's children. That that which the palmer worm, the locust and the canker worm, and the caterpillar have eaten. I will replace the years. If you don't tell it to your members, tell your children's children. Your blessing has a three to four generational expiration. 
And Lord, I'm dropping bombs so fast, I'm going to try this again. The thing that God promised you goes beyond you. He's a God of three generations. Uh, he's a God of that of was, is, and is to come. He's a God of Abraham, Isaac, uh, and Jacob. He's the God of the sun, the moon, and the stars. Uh, give God a praise for the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost, uh, the blessed Trinity. There's a trifold blessing on your life. The devil can't kill your business in one generation unless you don't know the word of God. He can't kill your ministry. I've just been serving for it. For one, one of my sons is going to fall. Stephon, Isaac, Aubrey, come on, Isaac. Somebody has got to hit. And even to my children's children. So if you want to know how long you're going to last, uh, you better be a covenant man and understand what I'm going to get. And if the boys don't get it, the girls will. Will you please give God a threefold, trifold, generational blessing? You ain't about to die no time soon. Hey, Jesus. 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 Even though it looked by the third generation like it's dead. Huh? But that third generation, that's the one that's going to really wrestle with God for real. There's Abraham that God's promised the riches. Huh? There's an Isaac that had to go and redig the wells that his father, because the Philistines will try to stop what you've done after 40 years. Genesis 26.